Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. It's your boy Marvin. I hope everyone's having a good day today. We're going to get straight into a video and I'll comment as you go. And it's Andrew Tate detained again. What is happening? And this is Candice Owen having her opinion on this. So uh, we will discuss as we go. Tuesday and we are sorry that we are late today with this episode. We wanted to make sure that we had the most up to the minute information pertaining to the Tate brothers. Yes, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate. They have been detained yet again in Romania. The story is getting crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Plus, later on the show, we have for you a prison reform advocate. He went viral because he appeared on Joe Rogan talking about the ills, of course, in and out. Thank goodness he got an, another opportunity to walk the streets because he's now been arrested for allegedly decapitating a man. Oopsies, maybe not the best prison reform advocate. And later on, we're going to discuss Lady Gaga. She is deeply upset because she doesn't believe that Dylan Mulvaney should receive any backlash for celebrating International Women's Day. Yep, all that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. Here's what happens when you have £10,000 or more capital to trade with. You can eliminate... All right, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, let's jump right into this. The first thing that I want to say, I'm always very honest about the fact that there is a pre-existing friendship here. What am I talking about? I've shared this many times, but my husband and Andrew Tate have been friends for years, and they were friends longer than my career has been. So when I met my husband, he was already friends with Andrew Tate and I had met Andrew Tate twice. And just to be clear, he was always very kind to me. This was before he really blew up and became the eighth most Google person, most Googled person, pardon, in the world. Anyways, you guys know how the story goes. Last year, I went out to Bucharest to interview Andrew Tate. I was really interested in how he had achieved so much fame. He suddenly so relevant, a topic of debate within the UK school system. They're banning Andrew Tate. Don't talk about Andrew Tate. Just an interesting conversation and dialogue to have. But of course, I caught a ton of heat. And the reason why I caught a ton of heat was because Andrew Tate within Romania was charged with human trafficking and forming a criminal, a criminal gang pardon to sexually exploit women. Both so this case is still pending. It is due to go to court. Um, it has been sort of pending for over a year, a, a, um, a year now, um, while the prosecution gets their evidence together, so it seems. But just to tell people that who don't know who Andrew Tate is, um, he's an influencer and a businessman. He has come out and said things sometimes against women, which he has apologized for, but which were completely out of order. Um, he generally um, uh, talks a lot of good things, but um, a lot of people uh, basically think it's hate speech he's on about um, against the government and stuff like that against women. But it's up to people to obviously make their own mind up um, about him. At the end of it, there's good and there's bad, but you get that in everybody. Um, so he'd been arrested again. Um, there is a warrant uh, in a court in London, a magistrate warrant, uh, for him to come back and face charges, which uh, were wiped and now have come back again. So um, I'm just wondering whether Candice is going to say the same thing on this. Both him and his brother, plus two Romanian women, were arrested in Bucharest in December of 2022. Now, to be clear, despite being arrested, there were no charges that were brought against them until six months later. So imagine that, six months after your arrest, you get charged completely backwards. And three of those months as they were awaiting charges were spent in a prison cell. I thought that was completely wrong, completely backwards. People were upset with me because they wanted me to have asked him questions about that case. And the truth is I hadn't looked into it until after I interviewed him. And then when I did look into the case, I was very committed to the idea that what was happening in Romania and to him were a bunch of trumped up charges. I did an entire episode dedicated to breaking down the case 
And after looking into it, it was completely ridiculous. Honestly, that is my belief. I thought that Andrew Tate would be found not guilty in Romania of the charges that were brought against him. If you're interested in how I came to that conclusion, you are welcome to go back and watch the older episode where I break down that case. We will include it in the link in the bio on YouTube if you're watching this on. I can understand what she's saying, but hey, look, um, I think people who are interested in this case should have a look themselves. I do think it's kind of weak myself. But I'm one of these guys who think that at the end of the day, you've still got to be um, uh, 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 shown to be not guilty by the court and then carry on with your life. This is my thing. But like I said, I think the evidence is weak. I've looked at it. Um, it, it there's many articles on it on what happened. Not that many people have um, come forward. And, uh, you know, I think they probably, you know, uh, it's someone just coming forward just for money that's my thought on what i got from it at the end of the day because people would be coming out of the woodwork left right and the center on youtube now what's happened since then is that things looked very much like they were going in that direction in terms of the courts in january of this year andrew and his brother won an appeal they were challenging romanian authorities and their seizure of his assets. It was completely ridiculous. Despite there being no charges, they confiscated a ton of stuff, cars, money, 15 luxury cars, 14 designer watches, plus cash in various currencies worth an estimated 3.6 million euros or $3.9 million. All of that seized without having even brought charges. So yes, they said, you know what, we're going to reopen this. We're going to take a look at those seizures. Doesn't really make sense. And then on top of that, while they had initially had them in prison, they moved them to house arrest. And then from house arrest, they said, actually, you can move all throughout Romania. So again, things look like they were treading in the right direction for the Tate brothers until last night or this morning. If you're here in America, we woke up and wow, something has happened. And that's something that has happened. Well, Andrew Tate predicted it. Take a listen to a prediction that Andrew made recently. I'm Ashley Parry and I've made over $650,000 in the last 18 months alone from zero. As we speak right now, and I'll say this publicly, as we speak right now, the UK is trying to put me in jail. England, because Romania has failed, so England has picked up. And England's coming up to me with all this garbage and they're going to try and charge me soon with some imaginary crimes. Maybe as well to drop the documentary. Well, there you go. Yeah. Of course, because you have to, you first you have to poison the public yep, mind. Yep, yep, To believe that you to are To believe that, guy, right? Yep. So the UK is trying to put me in jail. And I'm saying this now on this podcast. Everyone, listen to me. The UK is coming next. Romania's failed. UK's picked it up. And as the UK try and put me in jail, I sit and I wonder. I say, imagine being a prosecutor. I probably shouldn't say this stuff. I'm just going to say it. And you get paid, I don't know, three grand a month or whatever, two grand a month. And you're sitting there just looking through my whole life for months. Oh, you made money. Oh, that's a lot of money. That must be a crime. Oh, Ferrari. Oh, that's a crime. Oh, my God. And he has a nice watch. Crime. Like, and you're just sitting there. The obsession. And for like six months, just sitting there. Just unlike the yeah. and like, It's kind of weird that there's all these full grown adults with this much obsession, making documentaries, trying to take me down, prosecutors in dark rooms going mm -hmm. through my life, trying to take me down, ex-girlfriend blowing up my phone who I don't reply to anymore. <laughs> like, everyone's just like, yeah, it's weird. And I just wake up going, there's so many other people's lives which are just intertwined with mine or obsessed with the idea of trying to be involved in mine. And I can add to that prediction when I can tell you going, going on in the background, because obviously, like I said, there was a pre-existing relationship there, is that Andrew had informed me that weird things were happening in the UK. Like as he's dealing with this case in Bucharest, he has friends that are messaging him saying, oh, the UK government has knocked on my door. They're asking questions or they stopped me to ask questions, asking if I've ever been sexually trafficked by you. T -t utterly bizarre again. So what ended up happening last... So this looks like it's, how can I put it, government assisted in like they want to get something on him which is legitimate. Wow. If you're getting that, then that's telling you something that um, somebody wants you bad. Last night or this morning, Andrew and his brother Tristan were detained again. 
on Monday over alleged sexual aggression in a UK case dating back to 2012. Allegedly four women say that between 2012 and 2015 that they reported Tate to the UK authorities for alleged sexual violence and physical abuse. And the Crown Prosecution Service, just to be clear, the CPS, that authority declined to prosecute him based on the evidence that those women had presented. So what happened next? Well, the alleged victims then went to crowdfunding. They publicly funded an effort to support their legal costs to pursue Andrew Tate and his brother civilly. So again, just to make that clear, the Crown declined to prosecute him criminally. And so they said, you know what, we're just going to go after you civilly. And that is the reason that he received a knock on his door and him and his brother are being detained. So right now. Wow. Wow. Um, Almost sort of 10 years later. And after that, when the case started as well, um, how the years go by, that's kind of mad. That really is. Look, um, again, uh, he's going to have to deal with it. But um, I think he spits a lot of truth about our world and where it's going. And I think you've got to be deep enough and intelligent enough to know where he is, especially when you're on the ladder of going higher, should I say. But, you know, the government want to know your business and what you're earning. This is very, very important um, to know um, what's going on and, 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 and where this is going to go. I can see this going worse before it gets better. But um, I hope that it does go in their favour. Um, I've read some of the case, not all of it, but like I said, the evidence and like... Candice Owens has said it, it is pretty weak but like I said now it's going to go back to New England the case London anything could happen and anything could be said so it's going to be interesting um, but the crime prosecution of uh, wiped out of court and these girls have kept the, the, these women that say that they were sexually assaulted or abused um, are taking it further to another court now it's a limbo The Romanian government has to make a pivotal decision and they will make that decision on Tuesday as to whether or not they will execute on the warrants that have been issued by the UK's Westminster Magistrates Courts. Now, a couple of things I want to say here about how strange this is. First and foremost, we're talking about a civil suit. The amount of effort that it takes to contact Romanian authorities to issue warrants, what, to make him appear for this civil suit. I'm I'm just not clear on any of this. First and foremost, despite the fact that there are multiple countries that, yes, they they have extradition treaties, it takes the most extreme circumstances for one country to say, you know what, no, we actually are going to want to extradite on that. You, You have to be talking about a case where you're dealing with a drug lord. Seriously, there's there's just got to be billions of dollars. It's Mexico, and you're like, you know what? We want to actually extradite that criminal drug lord because this case means a lot to to us. We don't typically see this. I don't know if we've ever seen this pertaining to a civil suit. Now, I want to be clear. I have always been very honest. When looking at the case that was happening in Bucharest, as I said earlier, it looked like complete fluff. It looked pointedly ridiculous to me. And I will be honest, I have not had the time to examine whatever case was brought forth from these women back in 2012. I haven't either, but like I said, once it's out in the open, people can read it and make their own minds up about it and let the correct uh, people deal with it. Um, Obviously, Andrew and his brother's lawyers uh, um, the prosecution services or the lawyers for these girls. At the end of the day, this is how it, it, it is going to be dealt with. But it, it's, it's incredible that it's just sounded a little bit fishy. It was thrown out of court and now it's come back up again in another court. Of That they are now suing for uh, civilly. But I will say that just off the bat, it's giving E. Jean Carroll vibes. It's giving... Okay, this is the man that we want to take down, and now we will find a reason to take him down. And we know that the courts will side with us. Exactly what happened when Eugene Carroll said, oh, you know what? A thing happened between me and Trump. 
back in the 90s and I'm just descending out of this fog and I want to make sure something happens to him. And then the person, one of the people who founded LinkedIn got behind her, you know, it failed criminally and they got behind E. Jean Carroll civilly and then she won tons of money, more money than she was even asking for. It's starting to feel like that. So I'm going to ask you to park aside your feelings for Andrew Tate. I understand that some people think the stuff that he said, the clips that are circulating of him are completely awful. And guess what? I would never agree with or condone any language that I disagree with or, 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 or web, a webcam business in general is counter to everything that I talk about in terms of me taking a stance against pornography. I'm again asking you to park aside your personal feelings regarding the morality of his business to ask yourself a question. Do you think what is happening to him right now is justified? Do you think that it is normal for the UK to be locking him? Look, we don't, well, we know something about, obviously, these girls have got a lawsuit going against him um, after their court case was thrown out of court by the Crown Prosecution Services, which is quite high. We know that. But we've still got to um, take both sides seriously and not take sides until we know what's going on. This is my thoughts. I look at Andrew's tapes, I look at the girls' tapes, um, the girls' side of things in that this has to be sorted out amicably, professionally and through the court, if, 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 if that's it. I do think that it is pretty, pretty strange how the BBC other channels are trying to say that this guy's bad for school children, bad for this, bad for that. Yes, he does say some over the top things, but um, I think you've got to take some of his stuff he says with a pinch of salt. Some of it he said, I keep saying it, against women, it was out of order, he apologised, some women like him, some people hate him, some men don't, don't like him. At the end of the day, some men do. It's as simple as that. We have to make a choice, but you've got to look at the whole picture before we can really, really judge someone. This is what I would say. Hands with Bucharest over a civil complaint. I certainly do not think it's normal. Here is what Andrew had to say following his release from his detainment last night. Take a listen. This is the best product that he'll have released in recent times. Many of you... Unfortunately, I don't think many people in Romania understand, but in the West, in the countries that are owned by the Satanists, you look at a certain level of fame, you either put on a dress or you go to jail, and I'm happy to make my choice, which is jail every single time. My soul is not for sale, neither are my principles. We are well, innocent, innocent men. No, we're very innocent men, and in time, everybody's going to see that, and we're very excited to finish this judicial process and get our next. Well, you are free for now, but uh, still, the Romanian courts approve yeah. extradition to the UK after the trial is over here. I've been asking the Romanian courts to go to the UK myself. I've asked five times and been declined. So now I get to go home. It's fantastic. So here is what I will say. Looking at this case and looking deeply at the case that happened in Bucharest, which, as I said, I don't think they ever had any legs to stand on, it does seem like this was always about the UK. My suspicion is that the UK government has a ton of power and they have wanted Andrew Tate for some time. And what happened was that in Romania, they got lucky. They had this woman who sent some text messages to her mother. Her mother then contacted authorities against her will. The woman then went and had, the young woman went and said that she just wanted to go to Paris and go shopping with her friends. Whatever it is, the moment that Bucharest made the arrest, my suspicion is that the UK government encouraged his detainment because the UK government wanted to make sure that Andrew Tate remained in a state that was friendly to the UK. Possibly he could have gone to the Middle East, you know, uh, and they would not have been friendly to the UK while they investigated him and they looked for something to hang him on. The UK government hates Andrew Tate. They made that clear. Uh, they are enforcing policies in the schools to not allow students to talk about him because he became that famous in the UK. Tons of young children, tons of... Wow. Wow. I knew he was big, but... Um... Yeah, it, it, it's, when the BBC attacked and say it was affecting young people, because we know the um, BBC are a government channel, it is very important um, to give people a chance. I mean, they have made him out to be 
um, a bit of a rogue, not a nice person. And yet, those facts haven't been unveiled yet. So, um, until he's found guilty, he, he let him live his life. Um, because I don't think he's going to stop talking the truth at the end of the day, unless something's going to happen to him. These are my honest, honest, honest thoughts at the end of the day. Yes, he's said stuff that he shouldn't have done, but there's a lot of good stuff he has said and that are motivational to a lot of people. And there's a lot of young men ringing in and texting that you've heard that he's saved their life, um, which, which is a brilliant thing. The young boys in particular were suddenly watching his content, repeating phrases that he says in the classroom. They felt that he was too culturally relevant without being an individual that they could control. And you might think that that's ridiculous. You might think that that is conspiracy theories. You might think that what Andrew Tate just said there regarding, well, my refusal to put on a dress is the reason why they want to come after me, is something that is fundamentally ridiculous and, sp and conspiratorial. I don't. Because a all the topics that we have been covering on this show as of late because of the topics that we covered regarding Diddy, because of what we have just discovered yesterday about Emmanuel Macron's non-wife, I would say, potentially Emmanuel Macron's husband, looking at that case and the circumstances and the media's refusal to report it. I do believe that, as I have made clear, all across the world, we are recognizing that there are black male rings and that the way that they are able to control people in Hollywood and the ideas that shape us is through blackmail. And so you have somebody like Andrew Tate who became remarkably famous. And again, I am not saying that there are not things that he has done in his past that he should be ashamed of. In fact, when I sat down with him and spoke about those things, he admitted that he was ashamed of them, that he was, you know, 10 years younger or whatever it was. When the This is what I've said. He's apologized. He said some stuff which he shouldn't have said. This is what I've always said. You do things, you, I've done it myself, said things stupid and, and thought um, that God, I, I, in my experience of life now, I wouldn't have said that now compared to 10 years ago. You change, you evolve, you become a lot older. What was he in his mid-twenties back then? You know, a bit silly, thought he was a man. We've all gone through this. Like I said, sometimes um, um, people fail, but then they grow. It's a part of life. Those clips were circulating and he's not proud of the things that he says. People grow up, they transform their opinions. And my gut is that Andrew Tate, the person that he is today, is somebody that can do tremendous good. I believe that. I believe that, especially with the audience of young men that is following him. But he is not telling young men to behave like women. He's not doing that. In fact, he is saying the exact opposite. He is taking a stance against modern feminism, which has been twisted to be something that is fundamentally anti-man. He is taking a stance against men that wear dresses, encouraging young boys to make fun of those sorts of people. So whether you like him or not, he is bringing forth a culture that we know is not something that the elitists that are in control, the leftists that are in control, and yes, an element of it is in fact satanic. The satanists that are in control want to see catch fire. That has to end. So are they going to go back and relitigate every element of his history. Yes, I do believe that the UK government, and that really something much more powerful than the UK government, wants to take Andrew Tate and his brother down because they are unable to influence them. You can disagree with that all you want. Wow, wow. That's massive. That's massive. So we're talking about a higher force than the government who seem not to like them because they can't influence them and they're not doing things by the laws and regulations. That's deep. That is very, very deep. Want, but I'm encouraging you to take a look at the case in Bucharest, to think that they have detained them for this long on what I believe to be trumped up charges and see this additional case, which defies common sense that there would need to be any coordination between two countries regarding a civil matter and then draw your conclusions. And that's all I'm going to say about that. When we say something is free. Wow. Um, Candy's dropped it there. What can I say? What can I say? And like I said, I think everybody has got to read um, the evidence on the case, especially the one in Bucharest. And there's probably some documents 
on the case going back to 1516, which was shut down by the Crime Prosecution Service. So look at it into yourself and see what you come up, come up with. Um, I do think there are big people after him in this world for not being a yes man, but that is another story. I think everybody can make their own conclusions of that, but things do seem a bit strange in that um, they want him tried for something and convicted because he's one that does talk a lot and um, influences millions of millions of people. Don't forget to subscribe to Streamline Entertainment and let me know your, your, you know, your food for thoughts on Andrew Tate, whether he's guilty or not guilty, or whether the government are trying to take him to the cleaners or get him done for something. There are many, many, many things that um, we can say about Andrew Tate and where this, where this could end up. But like I said, who knows? I'm not the judge and jury, but I do look at both parts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thank you for listening wherever you are in the world.